Hello and welcome to another online session with Time to Shine. I'm really glad to see that lots of you are enjoying our online content and I hope that you continue to do that during this time of isolation. I'm absolutely loving creating it and hearing some of your stories. Over the next few weeks, I wanted to teach you about practitioners. Practitioners are the people who created all the ideas we use in drama today. The first one I want to look at is Stanislavski. Stanislavski created the style of naturalism. Some people call it realism as well. This is the idea that the characters you see in a performance, in a movie, are real. And you kind of get a relationship with them as you watch it. So when they die at the end of the story, you feel sad. But there's a certain way he goes about creating this realism and naturalism aspect. The first thing you have to think about is actually, how do you create a natural character on stage? Well, the way you have to think about it is that when we look at emotion, when I say I'm going to be shocked, I don't know anybody in real life that goes <gasps> when they're shocked. That's an exaggerated movement that we all associate with being shocked. However, Stanislavski would say, actually, it's more a natural approach and you might just relax your stance a little bit, tense it up when you're a bit shocked. And then it would go kind of back to normal again when you have a conversation. The same for our voices and the same for our movement. Our movement and voices don't always have to be big and over exaggerated. In fact, Stanislavski draws away from that idea because he wants it to be as realistic as possible. As a result of that, he thinks of three techniques that really might help you with your performances. I want you to think of a character now that you might like to play on stage. Okay, you might think of a stock character similar to like a firefighter, a nurse. You might be a superhero. You might be just an ordinary girl who walks along the street and sees something really strange and you don't know what's going to happen. You might be a boy actually who's going for an audition for a football game or you might decide that you are off on an adventure and you don't know who you're going to take with you or what's going to happen. But decide on your character now. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at using some of these techniques to develop the realism of those characters. So the first one is emotion memory. Emotion memory is the concept Stanislavski introduces where when you're feeling a certain emotion as a character, you try and remember a moment when you yourself have felt that emotion. So for example, if you were thinking of being happy as a character, you take a moment to yourself to think about, okay, when was a moment when I was happy? How did I behave? How did I walk? What happened to me when I was happy? As a result then, when you are your character and you're happy, your body, your movement, your facial expressions all become that way inclined because you've remembered how you behaved when you felt that emotion. Have a go now, pause the video and have a go at trying to use emotion memory to show different emotions and different feelings on stage. Excellent, hope you had fun doing that activity. The second technique I'm going to teach you is the magic if. Now, it's a little bit similar to emotion memory, but rather than focusing on emotions, it focuses on situations. So the concept of the magic if is that if you were in that position, what would you do? So you're developing the characters again by making those connections to yourself. However, you don't have to behave in the same way that you would. So, for example, if in a situation, I would probably panic. So if I was uh, walking down the street and I saw an alien walking towards me, I would panic and probably scream. But my character might behave in a different way. So I would know how I would behave and then I can change that and adapt it to how my character would. And again, this allows you to re re like practice with your bodies, practice with your movement to develop that ability to show how the character would behave. Have a go at that now, thinking about the magic if. What would happen if you were in the situation your character is in? Okay, the third technique I'm going to teach you today is called given circumstances. Now, given circumstances, the idea that you, before you come on stage or before you enter a film set, something's happened to your character before then. They weren't born five seconds before they came on stage. So you have to think, okay, what are my given circumstances for my character? Have they got any siblings? Have they got a pet? What's going on in their life before we are introduced to them as the audience? You've got to think really your character is a person and you've got to build that person up before we enter stage to allow that realistic element to come across. If we just come onto stage and don't really think about our characters, then the audience will see through that because they'll know it's not real. So think now, what are your given circumstances of your character? An amazing technique which I want you to have a go at is looking at doing a role on the wall. What this consists of is you draw a person, 
just an outline of a person on a piece of paper. You write inside their appearance. So what do they look like? Okay, what do, how do they behave? And around the outside, write their personality. So how do other people perceive them? How do people look at them from a distance? Are they kind? Are they caring? This really helps for you to establish what sort of a character you are portraying. And often when you look at a script, it will come from the dialogue they have and the conversations they have between other characters. But if you're creating your own performance, it's really important you think about these elements so that when you do go onto stage, they are as realistic as possible. So remember, you've got those three techniques. We've got the given circumstances, the magic if and emotion memory. When we are doing these things, it's really important we do not over-exaggerate our bodies and our movements. We keep them quite subtle, natural, as though you were just talking to your friend on the street. And really think, actually, how can I portray this emotion in a realistic way? By using those techniques. Think about how you behave as a person and then apply that to your character. They might be completely different to you. So then you might have to look at somebody else and actually look at your family members or look at some people you might be doing this with and get them to have a go as well, because that might really help. What I'd like you to do and send in your videos if you can is have a go at using these three techniques and have a go at putting them into practice with a character. You might want to create your own storyline or you might just want to show actually how you have created your own character and do kind of a monologue situation. But please send them in and keep um, having a go at all these activities. Enjoy yourself and stay safe. Thank you very much.